everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I am dying to knit a particular project. Believe it or not, I have more of these videos planned, but I haven't actually finished them because I haven't finished the knit objects. So hopefully uh, as we move into 2021, we will see more of these. But uh, when Denise Byron from Byron Handmade announced a knit along for her moving forward wrap, I really loved the design and wanted to participate. But it starts in a week and I don't have the yarn that I want. The sample is made using a bare yarn that is a non-superwashed wool and it is gorgeous, gorgeous. But as much as I love that cream color, I'm Chemnitz, I dye yarn. I should dye some yarn to do this project. And so I have picked three skeins of Knit Picks Gloss Fingering. This yarn is 70% merino wool, 30% silk. So I know it'll absorb color a little bit slower, but I'm going for sort of a subtle tonal, and I'm gonna dye the yarn into two, in two to three different layers of color uh, to have maybe a few shifts of tone in there as well. The reason why I'm saying two to three layers of color is if the original color that I dye isn't as saturated as I want, then we'll do some more. Purple is my favorite color. I really like this purple that I created in my semi-solid versus tonal project and thought that this would be a nice place to start. Maybe I'd want a little more blue, but we'll see and we will have some fun. I'm actually gonna be using the exact same stocks that I had mixed up for this, but I don't think I want the color to be this saturated. So I think for the first two layers, and I'm gonna do a layer of red and then a layer of blue, I think for those layers, I am gonna start using the same amount of dye total I used over here, but on 300 grams of yarn. That's my plan. First, I need to go pre-soak this yarn. I'm gonna add on removable nylon zip ties and then we will pre-soak it for eh, 20 to 30 minutes. I'm pre-soaking the yarn in not enough water. There will be some variation in here and I am more than fine with that. Um, so let's just start mixing the color. I'm already going back and forth myself a lot, but I think instead of doing just one X the color, I am going to go ahead and do two. So for the first layer, I used 50 milliliters or equivalent of half a gram of our 1% stock solution of Jacquard Fire Red. And I just added it directly to the pot. And now I'm gonna add, eh, let's say maybe four liters of water. Okay, so the only reason why I'm doing liters is because I had a measuring cup handy that did that. So let's start by adding one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar. The pot is still cold and the yarn really is not that well pre-soaked. All right, my battery died as I started to dip the yarn in. So I just quickly reset. Okay, and I had set this aside and I was saying that the yarn has pre-soaked not very long. I initially said longer than it actually is going to do coming in um, and adding it and now I'm not going to move it very much. Um, hopefully we will have some good consistency between the three colors. I don't want it to be wildly variegated but I don't want it to be without any depth. So something semi-solid with a little bit of tonal and we're going to be layering the color in multiple levels so that way uh, we can have something with some consistency, but the pot is fairly crowded. This hopefully will get me for what I'm going for. Okay, I just turned on the heat. I'm gonna leave this for about 20 minutes. One nice thing about deciding to do layers is that if the pink is more uneven, I can always add more color. We can always go for something deeper than was my original goal. Um, but I have a feeling that if I'm going to be adding a lot more other pigments, it'll probably be more in the blue. But I am happy with where this is right now. And oh my goodness, see, there was a part that was completely dry. So let's forget what I said about not moving it because that is not what I want. Um, I didn't mind some places taking up less color, but that was a bit stark for me. 
Okay, hopefully then moving it that bit <laughs> will help. Because again, if the color is mostly even, because it is hand dyed, there will be areas that will have more and less intensity in there, giving me that depth I desire. I am very, very much going by feel, and I'm thinking I might do the blue in at least two layers, especially since the pot is gonna be warmer. Um, that is something that I am considering right now, but we will wait and see, and maybe I'll let things cool off a little bit in between each layer, uh, partially because of logistically that's what I'll need to do. But either way, I am excited and having a lot of fun with this. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. Let's check and see. I have a feeling, yeah, most of our color has absorbed, and I'm actually going to turn off the pot. Mainly, uh, I'm gonna turn off the pot, and I'll let things cool a bit. We'll remove the yarn, I'll remove the yarn off camera in a little bit, um, and then we will get ready for round two. Here are the three skeins of yarn, and they are fairly solid. There are definitely, nope, with the undeniably some differences, and there's some brighter patches and less bright patches. But what I think I want to do is gently and carefully move the zip ties down to the other side because there seems to be a lot more pigment down at that other side, and since there was a little less pigment around the zip ties, having this moved um, just might help. <laughs> um, but I am very happy with the evenness of the coverage. And now let's get ready for the blue. The plan is to eventually add 150 milliliters of the blue, which is Jacquard Brilliant Blue, also a 1% stock solution. Um, it is a color I also really, really like. Now the water is still warm, so it is not completely cool. Um, and we have a fair amount of acid in here. But I'm operating under the notion that you can always add more color, but you can't take it away. So I know that this amount of blue is not going to give me the hue I want. It's gonna be a fairly reddish purple, but um, by doing this slowly, I should be able to get nice coverage, um, but then we can see where we may or may not need to add more color. But yes, definitely this is not gonna be enough blue for what I want, but since the water is still somewhat warm, and it's like at a very comfortable, um, maybe even not quite as hot as a bath temperature. Like I could comfortably soak my whole body in the temperature, but it is pleasantly warm. So I'm gonna turn on the heat and you can see that we are definitely um, picking up some color already and you can see that there is uh, some variation in the hues we are seeing in here. And so what this may tell me is that maybe what I'm gonna wanna do is after this has absorbed the color, I may wanna remove the yarn and start fresh with a cool dye bath for the rest of that color. So this is almost uh, shifted it and I like, it's absorbed a lot of it already. I like that we can see different like levels of pink and purple in here, but I want something, I want more blue overall. So I'm happy that we have this layer. Um, I will go ahead and, okay, yes, I do have the heat on. I will go ahead and heat this up for about 20 minutes, but then we will reset to do the last round cool. The timer just went off. We, again, are not quite at a boil yet, but the, the dye has cleared. And we can see a lot of variation of tone here in the yarn, which is beautiful and is part of what I wanted. Um, but I want the next layer to be more subtle. In our yarn right now, we see some areas of blue. We see um, some purple and some pink. I want to let this yarn cool off as much as I possibly can. So I can already tell 
that, well, depending on how the next round goes, that the yarn will not be identical. But if I can get this reasonably cool before we do the next round and we start from something that is cold, then we can get a lot of coverage over here, which will sort of reduce the amount of variation that we see in here, um, which again is very, very subtle. Um, so I know we're gonna do at least one more round of dyeing because again, I haven't added all the blue. We could conceivably do one more after that if I still want the color to be a bluer purple, but I am very, very happy in the direction we're going because ultimately this is so subtle. I brought the level of water, cool water with no acid, a little higher than what it was uh, previously, and I'm now adding 100 milliliters of our blue stock solution. So this is as much dye as we had in the yarn already, just blue. So this will bring the ratio from one to one, red to blue, to three blue to one red, total. And we will want to make sure that this is well stirred before we add the yarn. There is still acid in the yarn, so it will start potentially to absorb some color. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly even, but I want a chance for it to be more even than what we did on the last time, which is the reason why I sort of split this up into two steps. So once the yarn has cooled, then we can go and add it to our pot. The yarn is now, I would say, about room temperature. And once again, I am going to shift uh, where the zip ties are located, just down about half, um, just so that way things are mixed up. And again, there's probably differences between the three skeins, but you know, we can, we can deal with that. We can make that work. Okay. Now I am going to add this in and let's see, move it around. We may end up wanting even more blue. The color still feels fairly dusty to me. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna leave everything in here uh, to soak for a little while. Um, ooh, that is pretty. Already, I think that we are getting um, some of this color to absorb a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is leave this here to soak. And again, there's some acid in our yarn. I'm gonna leave it in here to soak. In about 10 minutes, I'll come and move it and then do that one more time. Um, just so that way we can get some good access of all of the yarn to that dye. Uh, so, we'll come back. All right, I did stir it um, a tiny bit at the beginning of this. And, ooh, we are definitely getting much more towards a rebecca e color in here in our purple. It is still looking a bit pink for me, so there's a chance we will end up doing another round of blue, but there's a lot of blue left in the pot, so we will see how it absorbs. Okay, we need to add some acid now. Add three tablespoons, and I'm gonna come back in with the gloves. Which I probably should have put on before, but you know. <laughs> and we are gonna stir things up. So yeah, there's still a fair amount of blue in there. All right, and just really, really want it to be stirred. But ooh, wow, that's really cool. There's some like blue, um, is really getting more pigmented. If I was actually worried about some of those spots that felt more like a bright blue, and I'm really trying to spread things out in here. 
I was actually concerned about it, then I could go in and spot check, like I've shown um, in a different video, to add more pigment to those areas. But I do at least feel like we've got the color reasonably distributed. And so I think, oh dear, all right, I think what I want to do is go ahead and heat this up so we can absorb that blue and then we'll decide if we want more color or what but I'm very happy with where we're going with this very subtle variegated colorway. A lot of color has absorbed already and it, I just moved it to the stove um, so I am not like super concerned but I do feel even though we have the same total amount of color on here uh, that this is a little different than our inspiration. But actually, now that I come over, um, my inspiration is feeling a lot more red than what I have in here, which is making me happier. <laughs> um, because I did, was thinking I wanted something a little more blue than this. I still might go a little more blue, because I might want a little bit of pigment. Overall, um, there is the exact same amount of dye in these two skeins that are in these three, but the overall technique was just a little different. So we will see, um, let's just wait 15 minutes and see where we are to decide how to proceed. I changed my mind again. <laughs> Isn't that just the story of this project? We actually have received a little bit of warmth so far, but you can also see that most of the color Oh, actually, there's still a fair amount of color in here. Okay, um, but we are going to quickly set this aside. The yarn really is not that warm yet. Uh, and I am going to come in and add another 25 milliliters of this brilliant blue color. So this is not a ton of more color, but you can see it is a lot more than what was left there in the pot. Just to rinse that out. All right, now let's come back in because I did want a little bit more blue. Let's come in and stir everything around. Move it all around. Okay, and then so I guess this is layer like three and a half to four. Just make it a little more blue. The color feels actually pretty dusty, but I do know colors can appear quite different on silk than they might on other wool types. Um, so that is just something to consider. But I did observe that the colors, whoop, it seemed to strike pretty quickly um, before just with the acid and um, I'm not expecting my hand to pick up any color but there we go. I think I'm going to be happy now. I will come and stir periodically but now I'm going to turn on the heat and wait the 11 and a half minutes that are left on my timer. All right. We are warming up, and I have to say, I like where the color is a lot more. It's very, very subtle, that additional shift, but it has definitely brought things more violet, um, and so I am pretty happy. I think overall, this is a subtle colorway that should stand up to stitch patterns. Now, the question <laughs> will be if I follow my own advice and alternate skeins during the project or not and just let it be. So maybe we'll look and see if I feel any obvious differences between the skeins. But um, I am now going to heat it for I think probably 30 minutes or until I notice that the blue color has cleared. So, sending another timer. All right, let's check and see. I love the blueness that we have in here. It's a real transformation. Um, I mean, that's what the goal is with layering colors. There's a hint of blue left in the pot. 
So what I'm gonna do is add a splash of vinegar. I'll stir things up in a moment. We'll turn off the heat. And I'm just gonna let the yarn cool um, and absorb some more color. So a lot of the variation is so subtle now and I love it. That's exactly what I wanted. This is really pretty. It is absolutely multicolored, but it's still so subtle. I think not super subtle in the way that like, it's not just like a tiny bit of stitch definition. You wouldn't look at this and say it's semi-solid, but I think stitch definition should still work up really, really nicely with this color. And we'll be able to see when we kick it up how similar um, the skeins are to one another. So then I can plan out how I'm gonna do it. But honestly, I'm not seeing any bleeding. I'll even add like a waddle, <laughs> not a little, of some dish soap. But I'm not expecting to see any bleeding. I think we're not even at a 1% depth of shade. The one thing I need to remind myself is that these colors will probably be a lot lighter once it dries, especially because it is silk. But I'm gonna rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. Purples tend to be hard to film, but I am really, really happy with the depth that we see here. The final color is a little more blue than the purple I started with, but part of the reason why this colorway is overall a bit more muted is that silk content. Granted, we also had less dye overall here in our gloss fingering weight uh, blend that is 70% merino, 30% silk. But I've found that silk can absorb so much more dye, so to get an equivalent uh, intensity or depth of the color, I don't really want to say depth of shade because that refers to the amount of dye that you use, but in order to see the same like amount of saturation, uh, you would probably need more dye on the silk, which is one reason why I picked it, to be honest. Now, I do see some variation. Um, this one has some small patches of a more blue color. This one has a larger patch of the blue. And then this one doesn't really have very much blue in it at all. So I think that if I were to use them in a project, there are a few ways I could go about it. And I mean, I am gonna be using them in a project. <laughs> Um, and I'm gonna cake them up to really decide on that order, but my inclination is to start or end with the one with the least amount of blue and then have the other two and sort of have an intentional progression. Um, otherwise, I could knit from all three balls at the same time and sort of blend them together, but I don't really wanna have to deal with that. I'd rather just maybe closer to where I'm gonna switch that's when maybe over the course of a few inches, I will alternate rounds to just blend it together a little bit, especially since I'm making a wrap. That's my plan is to make a wrap out of this or really like a wide scarf. Uh, having some asymmetry in this project is totally okay. This is our skein with the most variation and the color differences are really, really subtle, which is what I was going for. Um, I really, maybe I maybe would have wanted a tiny bit more subtle, but you can tell that this is an extremely Rebecca colorway and a little bit of shine from the silk, which I'm not sure, I'm not sure how well the little bit of sheen is showing up, um, but it is there and I am really, really excited to knit with this. So what I'm gonna do now is, well, actually let's twist them up first. My plan is to show the finished knit object in this video, um, but you can see the beautiful variation in each of the skeins. And the silk also just adds that depth and dimension to the yarn. So even if you didn't layer the colors and you had more of a semi-solid, there would be dimension in there from that silk, which I think is just really fun. And I think that it really should highlight the stitch pattern of the project really, really well. The project I'm planning to make is the Moving Forward Wrap, uh, designed by Denise Byron. 
and I am really, really excited by this project. It's this arrow-shaped wrap that is absolutely stunning. It should be a fairly simple knit, but there are some suctions, so it should be really fun. And there's a knit along that starts in just a couple days, so I finished this up right on time. I'm sure that I will share progress of my journey on social media. Um, so make sure you follow me. I'm at Chemnitz on Instagram and I'm Chemnitz on Facebook. And I'm really, really excited to work with this. Believe it or not, I think that this is the third dying to knit video that I'm currently working on. And it's probably the one that's gonna come out the soonest. Probably because there is a knit along which is going to keep me on schedule. Whereas with some other projects, you know, the delays just sort of happen and you know, it is what it is. But I am really excited to play with these. This is a very me color. Can't you just visualize me all wrapped up in this? <laughs> uh, there's a reason why I like purple and why my logo is based on colors very much like these. It is what I am drawn to when I'm gonna make things for myself. That's just the way it is. So now I need to cake this up and by doing that sort of in a similar way that rescaining would, it'll help me see the average color from these skeins and get a sense of how they might knit up. Normally I might not cake up all three skeins at once, but I do know we have some slight differences in here and I really want to look at that difference. So I will be back shortly to show you all the yarn cakes. Now, why would I normally not cake everything up at once? Uh, that is just because, in general, you could stretch the yarn a bit. It's better to store yarn twisted up like this than it is to store it in a hand-wound ball or cake. Um, at least that's what I've been taught. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll pop back in, and, well, before Friday. Right now it's Wednesday, so probably today or tomorrow to show what the cakes look like. It's almost time for the cast on party and I just finished caking up the yarn. The one with the most variation is right here and then the one with the least is right there. All things considered, the colors are super, super similar. Uh, if we put these next to each other, maybe you can see that there's a hint more variation in here, but it's hard to say for sure. So I think, hmm. I'll need to check. I'm assuming that we start at the end of the arrow and sort of like move forward. So maybe I want to start with this one and work that way. But again, I don't think it makes a huge, huge deal um, for this project that I want to do. But I think that is my plan. Looking at the cakes this way, you can see a hint more of that variation. Again, I'm not sure how much you'll be able to tell this on the final garment, but I think going one, two, three um, will sort of help. Either way, I am so excited to cast on. After the cast on zoom, I would say the variation is perfect. Here is my finished moving forward wrap. I didn't film much along the process, but I did do a lot of Instagram stories. And so I will insert a bunch of those on the side as I am talking about the project. The repeats were short enough that it made it really easy to do one of the sections a day to keep up with the knit along progress. And it was just an absolute joy to work on and community of knitters that came together for this project was just absolutely amazing. I really, really hope to do so many more knit-alongs in the future. And part of me also wants to make this again because it was just so soothing that I was sad to bind off and actually finish. My project had amazing stitch deck finish and architecture before blocking, but I did block it using some wires down on the edges and then these uh, little combs. I will link to all of this down in the video description, but having these combs for the edge meant that I didn't get little dipples that maybe would have happened with individual pins. 
and it means that I could have kept that edge really nice and straight. I've shown you the whole thing a few times, but I want to see if you notice the difference. At the end, when I dyed the yarn, I said that I had some skeins with less variation and then some skeins with more variation. Can you see the difference? Where we had more variation, there's a little bit of striping. When you're far away, you don't really notice. You still see it as a little bit of tonal definition, and it's certainly not enough to overwhelm the pattern. The lace really shows through with this yarn. But the differences at the beginning are so much more subtle, and you don't really see a little bit of stripe and pull. It's just really much more subtle variation. Pulled back, you really, really can't tell much of a difference. And I know the difference, and I made it a little bit of a gradient. It's not really a gradient, but I did arrange the skeins in order of least to most variation with some intermediate in the middle just because I thought that was a fun way to go about the project. You know the blocking worked well <laughs> when you remove everything and the shawl stays in pretty much the exact same position. And the drape, oh my goodness, the drape of this is just beautiful. If you want to learn more about my blocking supplies, I will have affiliate links to all of them in the video description. Maybe later I can get outside to get some good pictures of me styling and wearing this, but it is a joy to include a knit project at the end of a dyeing video. And so if you like this and want to see more of these dyeing to knit type videos, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and make sure you turn on notifications by pressing that bell so you never miss a new video. I actually have more yarn dyes with specific projects in mind, and so you don't want to miss any of it because I hope to actually finish making all the items this winter. Here is the whole moving forward wrap. The arrow construction is awesome, and I would honestly love this as a blanket. I am not sure how much sense a merino silk blanket makes when I have two young boys and a dog, but it is so drapey, perfect, the perfect amount of warmth, and I am so excited to wrap myself up with this so much this winter. This way wrapped around doesn't really show off the error construction, but I have a feeling this is how I will probably wrap up in it a lot, <laughs> just throwing it over my shoulders. However, I also can see myself sort of wrapping and adjusting it, and adjusting it like so to show off the asymmetric ends a little bit. As I mentioned, I have many, many more dying to knit projects on deck and so we're gonna have a lot of fun and I hope to make some progress on those projects. I can't believe I almost forgot to mention that this is the 250th episode of Dye Pot Weekly. When I realized how close I was to this milestone, I thought that this would be the perfect video for it, and it's almost my birthday. So <laughs> all this wrapped into one, I just really want to thank you all for your support and for joining me on my yarn dyeing journey. And it is so, so much fun. So thank you all for being a part of it. If you want to knit your own moving forward wrap, I will have links to Denise Byron's Instagram, her website, and the pattern all in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.